So biofilms are protective matrices that are created by bacteria, and they can be a significant challenge when treating small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or SIBO. Now, if you've watched any of my past videos on why most SIBO treatments fail, there's a part one and a part two, I talk all about the importance of incorporating these biofilm disruptors. And in today's video, uh, is really for people who want to prevent SIBO from returning which I hope is everybody, right? Now, if you're someone who feels better when taking antibiotics or you're someone who feels better when taking antimicrobials, but when you stop taking Rivaximin or antimicrobials, your symptoms come back, there's a high probability that you're actually dealing with SIBO biofilms. Well, hey there, I'm Dr. Hagmeyer, and in the context of SIBO, biofilm disruptors really help break down these protective layers, making bacteria that are more susceptible to the antimicrobial treatments and also more susceptible uh, to our body's own immune system, right? So as a follow-up to those videos on why most SIBO treatments fail, I wanted to share with you some of the recommended uh, biofilm disruptors that really can help better manage SIBO and prevent it from coming back over and over and over again. Now, if you're new to my channel, I wanna welcome you here. And if you're an existing subscriber, of course, I wanna welcome you back. Now, before we get started, as a reminder, don't forget to check out the description box because in the description box, I'm going to leave links as well as some additional articles uh, and information that really complement today's video. So let's get started. Let's get in some of my favorite biofilm disruptors. Number one is NAC or N-acetylcysteine. NAC is a powerful antioxidant that really helps break down the mucus in those biofilms, right? It's commonly used in a variety of protocols that really are designed just to enhance the effectiveness of antimicrobial treatments. Number two is serapeptase. This is an enzyme, again, that can help dissolve biofilms. And of course, another benefit is it reduces inflammation. This is great for people that have issues with lungs, sinuses, and of course, gut pathogens. Number three is Interphase Plus with EDTA. Now this is a combination supplement that's specifically designed to break down biofilms, but in addition, it includes EDTA, which is a chelating agent. Now biofilms are heavily reliant on metal ions like calcium, magnesium, zinc, and iron for stability and structural integrity. These metal ions play crucial roles in maintaining the stability of that matrix. Well, EDTA binds these covalent and divalent metal ions, and basically it allows the body to pull these out of the, the, the biofilm itself. And by doing so, it makes the, the matrix, uh, the structural integrity much weaker, okay? That can be very, very important for treatment. The next one is monolaurin. Monolaurin is a compound derived from lauric acid found in coconut oil. It again has antimicrobial properties. Monolaurin is also lipophilic, which means that it's fat loving or allowing it to um, basically get into the, mel uh, the microbial cell membranes, making it harder for the microbes to adhere and stick to the surfaces and then develop that biofilm in the first place. Number five, number five is biocidin. Biocidin is again, another great biofilm disruptor. It comes in both a liquid and a capsule. I often use and recommend the liquid first, uh, as I can manage and really uh, you know, change the dosage a little bit easier with the drops as opposed to the capsules. Biocidin has a mix of natural herbs, things like bilberry, grapeseed extract, shiitake mushroom extract, golden seal root, a bunch of other things, right? But again, those are some of my favorite biofilm disruptors. Now, with that being said, there are a few other things when it comes to biofilms that you should know when it comes to using them and incorporating them. So let me give you four tips when using biofilm disruptors. Number one is timing. It's always recommended to take biofilm disruptors away from meals um, and alongside, and really uh, alongside your antimicrobial treatment for optimal results. Number two is dosage. Always start with a low dose to gauge tolerance and effectiveness and work up from that point. Again, follow the guidance of your healthcare provider for any special appropriate dosing. Number three is hydration, right? Be sure to stay well hydrated as when your body begins to break down these biofilms, toxins are released, inflammatory compounds are released into the system. And again, staying hydrated helps flush those out. Sometimes binding agents are very helpful with that as well. Number four is avoid calcium, zinc, magnesium, and iron three hours uh, from when you take those biofilm disruptors. Again, magnesium, calcium, and zinc, these all help reinforce that protective matrix. 
So avoiding taking any supplements when you take that biofilm disruptor is really important, okay? So there you go. Remember this uh, when it comes to biofilms. Combining biofilm disruptors with a comprehensive SIPO treatment strategy, which often includes dietary modifications, low FODMAP, probiotics, antimicrobial agents, really this is the key to effectively managing this condition and preventing it from coming back. All right, until next time, take care.